Hello, it's Good Good Fox here, and Stave Decay 2 Update 6.0 is out. Yes, it's a new patch, and of course, Twitter doesn't tell me when they post this. Anyway, no more intro. There's a lot here, and I don't want this video to be too long. What we're dealing with is actually a lot of balancing changes, one new item, and some bug fixes. First up is the wizard van, which is depicted in the screenshot here. Apparently you can call them in and just use them. It seems pretty convenient to be able to call in what I presume to be an eight slot vehicle for rucksack storage. Next up, the highlights, which gives us a window into the rest of the patch. We made several balance changes to the Daybreak rewards. Clio guns are better, Clio ammo can be crafted, and Red Talon contractors are cheaper, but a bit more unruly. We added some new facility actions. You can craft ammo, meds, and food, and you can teleport gas cans and repair kits straight into parked vehicles. We amped up the benefits of allied enclaves and added the option to dismiss traitor enclaves when you're trying to summon a new one and there isn't any room for them. We added the ability to use simple consumables while in a vehicle. And lastly, we bumped up the size of zombie hordes late in the game. Now it's time to move into the daybreak mode and content changes. Lots of stuff here. Clio guns have been rebalanced to make them more valuable in the base game. All Clio guns are 20 to 40% lighter. All Clio guns except bolt action rifles are 15 to 25% more durable. Bolt action rifles can't be more durable than they already are. All Clio guns except pistols are about 20 to 30% faster to reload. Clio pistols were already unusually quick. Clio ammo is now much easier to acquire in large amounts, though it still always costs prestige. The Red Talon Crafting Station allows you to manufacture Clio ammo at will, spending prestige, circuitry, and ammo from your resource stockpile. The Clio Relay now offers a Clio Drop alternative that delivers eight stacks of Clio ammo. That actually sounds pretty good. We worked with members of the community to rebalance Red Talon contractors so that they are not 100% overpowered. Now they're more like 85% overpowered. Existing Red Talon contractors now have the potential to run wild and waste resources if their morale is low. Existing Red Talon contractors are now irritable towards others, which makes them more likely to start fights when their morale is middling to low. However, we also changed the threshold that causes irritable characters to fight so that fights happen less often across the board. Newly recruited Red Talon contractors now come with minor downsides tied to their fifth skill. Hackers snack more than other people, logistics experts use up extra bed space for storage, and so forth. Red Talon acknowledges that attrition has made their pool of recruits shallower, so they now only charge 2,750 prestige for their contractors, down from the original 3,250 prestige. In summary, if you keep your morale high, your current Red Talon contractors should be just as awesome as they've always been, but it's more important now to keep maintaining that morale. New contractors now have minor drawbacks, but they also cost less. We now refund the full prestige value when you reject a Red Talon recruit. This removes the old incentive to exploit the system by restarting the game, and it's just nicer. Thanks for playing Daybreak. Ferals should no longer occasionally enter a T-pose when moving through the environment. <laughs> I've seen that happen before. Hostile NPCs should now properly trigger the detonation of deployable minefields they stumble into. Followers should now properly follow the player when in the vicinity of a deployable minefield. And lastly, we improved performance and reliability of voiceover playback during various moments of the game. Overall, I think the most significant change here is the increased availability of Clio ammo. That is really the main reason you wouldn't want to use Clio guns. That said, they haven't done anything to make the Daybreak mode more interesting, and they still haven't said anything about making the unlocks easier, because they do take unlocks away from you as you complete your collection. On to the general gameplay changes. Many simple consumables can now be used while in a vehicle. This includes bandages, painkillers, and other consumables that don't involve throwing, placing, or playing a complex animation. Consumables that cannot be used within a vehicle are now shown as unavailable in the heads-up display while you're inside a vehicle. 
Allied enclaves now offer a greater variety of more powerful enclave benefits to make the time spent befriending and supporting them more worthwhile. Here's a big one. Late in the game, zombie hordes can now be up to three times larger than before. You asked for it, and I'm sure we'll just run them over with a car and it won't be any different. When summoning a trader over the radio, you will sometimes have the option to dismiss an existing trader to make room for them if that's what it takes to get them into your map. Ranged weapons no longer jitter in your hands as you aim left and right. A new option in the gameplay section of the settings menu allows you to ensure that no weird zombies such as clowns, coneheads, and war reenactors appear in your game. We fixed a bug related to rapidly placing explosives that could result in premature detonation and character death. Sounds painful. We increased the size of safe zones created by clearing large sites to more accurately encompass their area. Survivor traits that reduce the number of required beds should be accurately accounted by the morale system. We fixed an exploit that prevented hostile enclaves from defending their base when mines were placed in the area. We solved a rare crash that could result when destroying a plague heart with an ignited bloater gas. Zombies should show up more often inside buildings while you are exploring. On the other hand, random zombies should now not show up inside an infestation that you've just cleared. Any attempt to pick up stackable items from the ground now tries to pick up all items in the stack. On to the facility changes. These are much shorter. You can now produce ammo, meds, and food at your base with the right facility and ingredients. Meds are produced in any infirmary from parts, chemicals, and ethanol. Ammo is produced in any workshop or armory out of parts and chemicals. Food is produced in any kitchen by spending seeds and ethanol. You can now use your parking facility to move gas cans and tool kits directly from your community's inventory into parked vehicles. And the infirmary now uses characters' nicknames instead of their full names, making it consistent with the rest of the game. I'm not sure if I agree with the idea of increasing the availability of meds, ammo, and food even further because it's already pretty easy to stay stockpiled, but it does increase the value of the kitchen further. Moving on to mission changes. Missions that involve searching dead bodies or killing zombified humans now pinpoint the corpse with icons on the minimap rather than requiring you to hunt for them near a marked location. We resolved an exploit that let players cancel threatening to leave missions by quitting and restarting the game. And lastly, we fixed a potential case where some NPCs in an enclave would not be visible during an objective to kill them all. And now on to the graphics section. We tightened up the graphics to achieve higher and more consistent resolution and frame rate on the Xbox One. We improved the camera transition when moving into or out of a crouch while zoomed in. We reworked the anti-aliasing system to reduce ghost outlines and blur artifacts when rotating the camera. This kind of like blurred and ghosting stuff is actually visible in some of my videos where at the end I do a little spin around my character to show the base. But lastly, lens flare effects are now smoother and crisper. Almost done with the changes though, hang in there. We've got multiplayer changes now. The multiplayer section of the settings menu now has an option for voice chat and is generally awesomer. Not sure if that's actually a word, but we'll let them get away with it. Most notably, we've added a push to talk option and left it unbound for players to assign as they wish. On a controller, we recommend D-pad left for emotes if you want to swap out something that doesn't directly impact your gameplay. When a player speaks over in-game chat, their player indicator pulses to indicate which character is talking. When a client is tethered to a host who is driving a vehicle, they now land in a passenger seat in that vehicle rather than being dumped by the side of the road like garbage. We fixed a rare case where the host would think a client's character died if they sustained many injuries, healed, and then sustained more injuries. We fixed a rare crash bug that would occur when an Xbox client joined a UWP host just as the host is completing the search of a building. You can no longer make progress towards the Citizen Z achievement by using the stuck radio command or by choosing and then canceling the volunteer or call for help command. And finally, the last section, interface changes. 
We reworked the use of icons in the heads-up display and the character panel so that the icons that pop up next to the health, stamina, and infection meters can be followed all the way into the deepest menu to find out what they mean. The show HUD and show notifications option in the settings menu now consistently turn on and off their respective UI elements. We clarified the visual language of the infection meter to make it clear that you are progressing from a minor infection towards full-blown blood plague. On PC, the game will now recognize any plugged-in controller as belonging to the player rather than specifically requiring the designated Player 1 controller. And last but not least, Undead Labs wishes us a happy holidays. And whoa, those are all of the changes. Hope you are able to survive the onslaught of information. I'm kind of indifferent to these changes. I do like the increased volume of zombie hordes, which should affect me as I do have a pretty in-depth playthrough, but what do you think? Tell me down in the comment sections whether or not you're happy with the direction that Stay the K2 is unfolding in. Subscribe to my channel for future Stay the K2 content, and of course remember that you don't have to be good to get good.